subscribe now and press the bell icon. Never miss an update. Hi, good afternoon. I'm going to talk about um, a developmental um, model of, of, of um, treatment. Um, and I'm looking at the work of Abraham Maslow and others, such as Eric Erickson. Um, all, these uh, gentlemen uh, focused on um, and looked on ego strengths uh, and deficits in the development and the importance of early childhood development. Today I'm going to focus how developmental concepts uh, can be linked to stages of recovery. So looking at the, um, uh, at the work of, of Maslow, in uh, 1960, Abraham Maslow talked about the notion of a hierarchy of needs. And he distinguished between two kinds of, uh, of needs. The first he called uh, uh, deficiency needs. Um, and the second he called growth needs. And deficiency needs basically are um, needs that he considered holes that need to be filled. And these holes need to be filled first before other needs could be filled. And uh, psychologists have traditionally seen these needs as motivating behavior. And, um, you know, they, they look at things such as uh, hunger, thirst, safety needs, and, you know, primer, primal needs need to be fulfilled before uh, secondary and tertiary needs. So, what I've done is taken a look at Maslow's uh, hierarchy needs and um, given you the chart adopted directly from Maslow. So, if you take a look at the psychological needs, the need for food, drink, and sleep, and exercise. Uh, then followed by the safety needs, which is security and order. And then the social needs, which come next. Sense of belonging and social interaction. And then looking at esteem needs. And then finally, self-actualization. Hold those thoughts in your mind, okay, as we move forward. So when we're looking at... Um, what is really a developmental perspective. It's really, it's a perspective that focuses on how individuals change and grow throughout life and the patterns and, and, and that shape their thoughts and feelings and behaviors at different points in their development. Uh, individuals are motivated to learn and grow and of course, uh, this uh, growth process uh, goes through uh, various uh, sequences and stages. And of course, these rates of development change and vary. And each of these stages of, of, of development have very specific tasks. Uh, and, there, and, and each task is a building block for subsequent later stage tasks. And of course, tasks that are not fully um, absorbed, learned, uh, assimilated, uh, become blocks uh, for later and impact later uh, uh, themes or, or issues. So if we take a look at these uh, from a uh, uh, recovery perspective and connect those last stages to, uh, to, to issues of recovery. Deficits and vulnerabilities that originate uh, in earlier life stages. They should have said stages, not staff. Sorry about that. Um, it, there are information that are skills deficits, uh, deficits in experience, and also unconscious conflicts that arise because we haven't sorted out some of those conflicts that still stay stuck with us, but yet we haven't resolved them. So we're talking about having very defined stages and unique tasks that we have to learn as we grow and develop in, you know, in our life cycle. And we have to resolve prior state, prior life stage tasks before we can move on to the next stage. And of course, our ability to cope varies between our ego strengths and our mastery of the previous tasks. And of course, unresolved tasks result in personality patterns that stay with us. 
The um, child development um, is of course affected by parental drug use and also parental socialization patterns and parental parenting styles. And of course, adult development is also impacted by personal drug use. And addictions always have a unique developmental patterns. That's what we all know. And if we take a look at it from a recovery perspective, uh, the strategic interventions can compensate for these uh, developmental deficits. And recovery, we know, is also a developmental process that has very definable and identified stages. And the recognition of these recovery stages uh, can be very useful when we're looking at certain, certainly relapse prevention and crisis intervention. When I'm looking at the issues that pertaining to um, current uh, life stages, I want to take a look at which of those deficits uh, originated in life stages. A lot of times when I'm doing the assessments, I always ask two questions. Not only when did you first start using drugs, but the question is when was your drug use on an ongoing consistent basis? It's not necessarily the first drug use, but it's the onset of consistent use, and then at what age was it? And what was the developmental task that was required at that age stage? And then that to me is, is, is an area where clinical work really needs to be zeroed in on. Okay, so then there's some information or skills deficits. Then on a psychological thing, remember, and now I'm tying this back to Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which is tied to our recovery needs. So on the physiological basis, and this ties back to some of the work I was talking about in terms of sanctuary. So as we're looking at people in recovery and we provide the sanctuary, we're looking at primary health care. We're looking at their diet and nutrition. We have to stabilize their sleep patterns, uh, interrupt the negative coping patterns, address the fears, and reduce the negative defenses. Again, this is also on the hierarchy of needs, which I'm tying to Maslow's hierarchy of needs, and this is the hierarchy of needs in uh, treatment recovery. So if I take a look at the safety needs, we build trust, provide hope, develop an internal structure, deal with empathy, and look at the life events that are influenced by developmental stages. Create the sense of belonging. Uh, and as we are developing their awareness, we're of course reducing stigma. That's the safety factor that we're talking about. Now, now we come to the social needs. Now if you re remember the, uh, the hierarchy of needs with Maslow, when we're looking at social needs, we're wanting to reduce guilt and shame, and of course, explore relationship issues. And main thing is diffuse role confusion. We want to let them know that they no longer have to wear the role of addict or alcoholic or uh, user. We need to change that role. We want to encourage, of course, responsibility, personal and social. We want to address the grief and trauma. We want to build positive ego defense mechanisms and promote that personal identity and peer kinship. And the, re the recovering community and 12-step fellowship also does a lot of that peer kinship uh, promotion. And now we want to talk about the esteem needs which are at the higher level, uh, as Maslow says. We want to start rewarding accomplishments, uh, foster family reunification, uh, dealing with uh, responsible parenthood, giving them vocational opportunities, allowing them to deal with atonement, uh, develop a personal value system, and of course develop their own moral code of conduct, which is very important. Now, when Maslow was, was uh, looking at his later writings, he started looking at the notion of what he called a third wave uh, or a third force. And when he looked at his third force, he, he started mm, talking about uh, humanistic psychology and, in, and, uh, and transpersonal psychology. And he and Carl Jung uh, decided that, that they needed to think about more of a 
perhaps we'd call it a spiritual uh, uh, spiritual ideas. In fact, Carl Jung did say to um, Bill Wilson way back when, it will take a spiritual solution to help you with your problem with spirits. Looked at this uh, notion and tied it to perhaps some of the work of the 12 steps. And if you take a look at the um, developmental model and apply it to the patina of uh, the 12 step, the need for renewal of basic trust and the need for sound values, responsible relationships and a purpose for life, and the need for regular experiences which celebrate life, which is very important. The need to move from alienation of guilt to reconciliation and forgiveness. The need for renewal and self-acceptance and self-esteem. And the need for renewal of hope and possibilities. And the need to develop one's higher self. And the need to maintain nurturing interaction with humankind. And the need for a caring community committed to spiritual values. So I've taken a look at Maslow's hierarchical needs and the 12th step and tried to put these together in a format that looks at a developmental model of recovery. I haven't finished the work yet. This is still a work in progress. And the next time you see the presentation, it's going to be more developed. But I thought it'd be uh, worth letting you know where I was um, tinkering with. And so if anybody has some ideas, I'd be happy to let you have to share them with me. But that was so that's where I am. Thank you very much.